Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Exacto Mundo with me, Eddie Del Seppi. Thank you so much for being part of this episode of this podcast. Before we get into the episode, do me a favor, give the podcast a rating and review on Apple Podcasts slash iTunes. Give a, leave a comment, let me know what you think of the show. Also, this show lives on YouTube in full video. Do me a favor, subscribe, hit the notification bell, get notified when an episode comes out every single week. I am accompanied by my good friend, his words, not mine, the fuel of this podcast, the keto king of Calabasas, Jeffrey Plitt. Hello. Where can they find you, Jeff? Find me on TikTok at What You Need to Know, on Instagram at Jeff underscore Plitt, and on Twitter at Jeffrey Plitt, and I spell it with a G. You can find me at Eddie Del Sebi across all platforms. Uh, this episode number 26. Thank you so much for being part of the show, everybody. Uh, I'm feeling good. I dropped off the lady. Uh, we're doing two episodes. Uh, uh, we did a second episode today. And the lady, uh, my girlfriend, I dropped her off this morning. And I'm at that point in my relationship where, listen, I love her very much. She's the love of my life. Uh, what else did she tell me to say? Uh, there's no one else <laughs> like her. I, I can't imagine a life without her. Uh, I love her to death. Uh, do us part is what I'm going to be hearing soon. Uh-huh. 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 But um, do I let loose a little bit when she's gone? Ah, I bet you do. Here's what happens, all right? The moment I say goodbye to her at the airport, and listen, I miss her and I love her and I want her to come back soon. I well, so tell me what happens right after you stop cheering. Okay. So, <laughs> as soon as she says, I love you, bye, safe flight, text me when you land. As soon as I get back in the car, number one, rip a huge fart. Ah. Oh. <sighs> You've been holding that in for years. Years. <laughs> I get home. Standard, standard practice for a man in his 40s sure. when he's alone in a big apartment by himself. I uh, start making prank phone calls. Oh. Start jumping on the bed, eating fudge for lunch. Sure. Yes, you know, swearing at the dog, calling him names. Sure. Middle finger, you name it. Uh, Do you grab your big brother's BB gun and start shooting spiders? No, that's ridiculous. No, <laughs> it's actually quite immature. I uh, play porn really loudly for the neighbors to wonder <laughs> what's happening over there. Uh, what else do I do? I also set up booby traps for any possible perpetrators who are that's trying good. to kill me. You know, um, I also have a live cutout. I have a cutout of uh, Michael Jordan that I put on a train track that I have go around the whole house so he thinks he's home. <laughs> okay, I see what's going on. Yeah, here. I put oil and various blow torches at various do- doorways. Paint cans on string hanging from the banister. That's a good idea. I should look into that. I never thought about that. That's a good one. And, uh, you know, standard stuff, you know. It is kind of, you know, you, you're a bachelor, not a bachelor, but you have a girlfriend, but you have a place all to yourself. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I love you like a brother I don't talk about, but, mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know, between me and you and our, my, our recording devices, yes. you might uh, you know, hold out as long as you can. All right, uh, kid? Okay. If you got a nice place, just, just really take it in. It's all you. That's you know? right. One day the lady will move in and it'll be great, but. In that time, as it happens naturally, you have the whole place to yourself. Yeah. I never had that. Mm. There's a piece of me that does. That's why I rejoice in these moments. Well, because you had a place. Not by myself. Oh. Remember, I had the roommate. I had an ex-roommate who was a former uh, Division II soccer athlete slash model, and she became a tennis instructor and then became a coach. Mm. Um, had to leave because... She admitted she had a crush on me. No, oh. <laughs> no, she didn't. <laughs> I, uh, but I stayed there. Remember the old place? Did you ever come over to the old place? Yeah. Did you? Yep. Uh, a few times. Yeah, yeah, a few times. Briefly. Uh, were you invited? Uh, but, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> was, was I there? <laughs> but um, he said you can come over, but only when I'm gone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, just say, just say you're my personal assistant when the, 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 my my roommate will let you in. Yeah. But I stayed there very cheap. I stayed. It was rent control, rent control apartment, and I was paying. Get this, eight eighty a month. It's pretty amazing. We split that. Oh. No, no, no. We've each. Wow. Sorry. So we each. Oh, each. Each. That was, that was my split. Okay. That's nuts. And we and I lived right in the heart of West Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. Like right by the Laugh Factory. Right. Um, right near the gays. Oh, right, right in the right in the asshole of the gays. But <laughs> uh, and that that place was like. Did I ever tell you when I was like homeless for a week? Did I ever tell you about no. that? No. 
No, no, we're talking no. about it. No. So, no, get into it. We need content. <laughs> <laughs> we need to buy some time. It's a two day shoot. <laughs> um, so, because I was a US, uh, because I was a, when I first moved to America, I, had, I didn't have a credit history. Hmm. And so, I was oh, staying. So the credit check didn't. Uh, so I didn't. I so I, I, I stayed well. there under the table. The 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 management company didn't know I lived there. Mm. My roommate knew I lived there, and I would just Venmo her or write her a check. But the property company didn't know I lived there. Oh, what's wrong with that? Well, you have to be listed as a as a as a resident. Yeah, but my, I guess my point is. It, it's her problem, not yours exactly. There's no actions they can take against you, but they might tell her she's in breach of a lease term and slowly try to evict her, which they probably right. wouldn't Right, and do, she, was, she, she was very like, I don't want to lose this place, so they're going to run your credit and run like a background thing, and then you're allowed to come back. So for one week, I didn't have a place to go. Oh, but, I see. So where'd you go? Your car. What what a what a what a what a a responsible human being would do was he would notify a friend. We weren't that close at the time. <laughs> we tried. I wasn't ready. But <laughs> don't grab. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I just see a hole. I got put my fingers in. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I didn't have friends that I could like say, "Can I crash for you for a week in Los Angeles?" What I should have done was went back to Canada hmm. and like made a little two week trip out of it, say my folks, you know, have some fun, whatever. But I didn't do that for some. I don't know why I didn't do that. I should have just made went to Canada for two weeks, and then she would have gave me a call like, "Hey, you can come back." Well, you know, so sleeping in your car, couch surfing, those are all fun things doing. You're still pretty young at this point. Uh, this is no, this is my thirties. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is in my mid thirties. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what I did was a responsible thing. Got a hotel. I shacked up with a woman I barely knew. Oh, uh, I see that. And I can speak about this loudly and freely because the lady isn't here. Oh, so someone you were hooking up with? Someone I was hooking up with. I, I stayed with her for a week. Ooh, that's that's tough. Yeah, it, it, it got weird because sex is great. You're having a good time. But then when you're just hanging out in your pajamas on your laptop, and she's like, well, I'm going to bed. I have to work in the morning. Okay, cool. I'll stay up. Yeah. Good night. Good night. I'll see you soon. And then I sneak into bed and yeah, because this wasn't like a strong relationship. This no, was just a this is hookup. someone that I put this. I don't remember her name now. Oh wow! <laughs> and I stayed with her for a week. Wow. So now, so then there got really awkward. She's like, "Well, I'm at work, and I guess I'll pick up dinner." And it's like, and then she started asking herself, "Who the fuck is this guy? Why is uh, he staying with me?" Yeah. And, you know, I'm just a good time, really. Uh, yeah, so see. that got weird because what you do with these hookups you're supposed to now were you, were you paying rent or were you paying with sex i was using my penis as my deposit <laughs> wow. yeah so i i would no she offered I see. after i begged <laughs> she <laughs> she offered after i asked and I demanded I and see. cried All no right. she, i told her did i lead in with like i got nowhere to go Mm. Stay with me. She she did jump in and say, "Stay with me. It'll be fun." In her mind, she's thinking like, "This is gonna be sex. It's gonna be fun." What you don't, what you forget about is, listen. You've been with your girlfriend and you live together for like, let's say, a week or whatever. Or you stay together for a week. I've lived with my girlfriend for like three or four years. Oh, God. Are you saying the sex stops? No, no. What I'm saying is, after the sex, you're just you're just hanging out with somebody. Yeah. That you don't love. Yeah. That you like. Right, but. You see, you don't. You, you see too much too quickly. Yeah. What you're supposed to see with this person is like, you go to dinner, you have some drinks, you hook up, you stay over. You're like, all right, we'll go to work. Okay, cool. You know, uh, and then you see him maybe three or four days later. Same scenario. Maybe yes. it's just a hookup. Maybe it's just dinner. You don't need to see them like you know with a face mask on and a right. Or they see you. With your CPAP machine. Yeah, or like going through, rummaging through their stuff. Uh, <laughs> so, so you saw a lot too quickly. I see. So I, I got, see. you could, I could tell That's at funny. the, I could tell at the end, towards the end, when I told her, hey, I'm allowed back in my place, there was a sense of relief, like, great. And like, <laughs> uh, a little bit like, That's funny. Okay. That's really funny. So there was a moment where I felt a, a little bit like, you know what it is? When I was in her house by myself, and I was like, why am I here? 
<laughs> it felt a little bit, you know. Yeah. Have you ever had someone stay with you for like a week, like a female? No. I had a I I, I had a girl that I was seeing one time, and she stayed with me for two weeks, and that's long. Oof. Because what happens in Los Angeles is what I hated about this is that when someone stays with you, it sounds great because you're like, we're going to have sex, we're going to hook up, whatever. But then you realize, oh, I'm driving a lot. Of, I'm becoming a tour guide. Yeah. I want to see Malibu. I'm like, <laughs> huh? Show me Venice. Uh. <laughs> I've never been to Universal Studios. I... <laughs> Why can't we just go to the? Why can't I show you the sites that I like, like, like the coffee shops yeah, the bird, I like, or the bird. or Swingers Diner, yes, uh, or my shows? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> those are the sites I like. Yes. So you forget that oh, it's a vacation for them, and I gotta be there for it. That's the worst. It's the worst. Yeah. I don't mind being. It's one thing if we experience it together in a different city. If we're both in Portland, or we're right. both in in New York. But, you know, if someone visits you and they come into LA and they're like. Yeah, let's spend all day just looking at all of the Hollywood Walk of Fame stars. It's like, like fuck. I'd rather die. Yes. I'd rather be as dead as the fucking stars I'm looking at. <laughs> I've been there. I was like, let's go to the Broad Museum. <laughs> why? <laughs> why do you like stuff? <laughs> <laughs> why, do you, why do people like things? Why do you like things? Yeah. Don't. Is it, are we getting old? Is that what it is? Um, something like that. Are um, we set in our ways? We're just becoming true angelinos that's what it is yeah where the concept of tourism being a tour guide is repulsive because it's driving it's the driving it's the same in new york city if you go in and you're like hey can you take me to times square oh you mean the block every new yorker avoids like the plague yeah yeah or like yeah show me this show me show me that i just and that, listen this is not an la thing this goes for anywhere uh, although if you're a crappy town, I guess you, you want the person to think it's cool. So you're like, Oh, let me show you this. Let me show you the cheese museum or whatever the fuck you got. Or like, uh, let me show you where, you know, uh, a president once said this place sucks or something. And they've made a monument. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I don't know. Like maybe I'm, I've had that happen where someone from Canada flies in and she's like, you know, she's like, Hey, I'm coming to town. I'm like, Hey, hang out with me. Let's have some fun. You know? And then you're hanging out and you're hooking up and then, you realize, and then she says to you, so do we only eat at Swinger's Diner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The what? worst is when I have friends that visit and they're like, they want to go to the beach. And, oh, um, God. In theory, beaches are fun, but in L.A., no. it's, it's such a long drive. It's such a haul. And, and also, um, like, the easiest one to get to, Santa Monica Beach, sucks. And so you have to, like, go out to, like, Malibu or something. It's so it's far. So it's, far. It's out of the county. It's usually about an hour's drive. Malibu is Ventura County. Okay, listen. Right. I know that people in this pod, people listen to this podcast, thinking like you're so lucky. You live in Los Angeles. You mm-hmm. can just drive to the beach. I I live in butt fuck nowhere, Ohio. Uh, the only site we got is a, a a factory that's still burning, you know, or whatever. Yeah. What they don't realize is the fun areas like Silver Lake or um, Beverly Hills, West Hollywood, or whatever. The fun areas to hang out in LA are very far from the beach areas. Yes. Yeah. You know, so it's not that I don't want to go to the beach. And I don't want to go to the beach. Yeah, <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, it's just I don't live by it. That's what it is. It's yeah. all a chore. Like I have a friend, my good friend Chris Gordon, who is like, let's go to Venice. I'm like, bro, it's an hour drive. Yeah. Also, back. Uh, Venice sucks. I don't know why. They're Venice back. It's dirty. But I, I get like, you know, I want to see it. I want. I get it. But like, uh, now, the, but when you date a local, when you're dating locals, you don't do that stuff you go to dinners you go to get drinks you uber around you're whatever you know you know so although it is exciting when you when someone flies into town to see you and you're like but after you know after you're you've cleaned each other's fluids off each other's bodies Uh you want to see some sights Uh and i don't want to see some sights right i didn't in fact the moment i the moment i came to los angeles and this would go for any city whether if i moved to austin new york uh, of Miami, uh, Seattle, but whatever. The moment I move there, I I'm not a tourist. I don't do touristy things. Right. I've never been to the Hollywood sign. I've never been close enough to look at. I've never been. I don't know. Name, name me another. Uh, give me give me a touristy Have thing. Have you been to do on a uh, a 
star, um, one of those trucks no. that drives around to the star's no. houses. Oh, I've been to the Getty Museum. That's cool. That's great. I, 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 so museums, I am usually down to go to. Yeah. Uh, my girlfriend's listening to this podcast. She might have some ideas. Oh, yeah. If you like museums, why don't you? Uh-huh. You know, I hated uh, museums when I was a kid, and I still hate um, modern art museums. But old art, like contemporary uh, art, is it contemporary or modern? I think it's called contemporary. Yeah, yeah. but um, Getty, like old classic art, that's yes. you know o- older than a hundred years. Or so. I love all that stuff. Give me you know, before we get on our topics. Give me a place that you want to go, where you're going to look at something historical that's like either a monument or a site. Give me some place in the world that you're like, I want to see it and see if it moves me, if it mm-hmm. amazes me. Do you have an idea what you what you do? Well, like I visited France briefly, uh, or Paris, let's say, uh, with my uh, family, but uh, it was raining in the city, and I, I never saw the uh, Eiffel Tower. I'm sure it's great, but you know, I don't have to see the Eiffel Tower. I could go and see a bunch of cool small things in, in Paris. For me, lately... And maybe it's because my algorithm has like said, "Hey, I heard you like this." Like they kept showing me videos. I think I want to see the pyramids. Oh, that is kind of because cool. I'm I've, I've got my the TikTok algorithm is like, "Hey, heard you like people being can, who can't conceive how these were made," and all the stats uh, yeah. of like, "Where did this rock come from? This quarry that's a hundred miles away." And yeah. uh, it, uh, the more I think, of, the more I read about it, or like not read, I don't read. Really, uh, the more I watch <laughs> videos about people who read about it, uh, <laughs> The more I'm amazed, it is it is white. Cool. You know, it's funny. Like this, this whole background. Mm-hmm. You know, I had to saw the the panels. No, you didn't. Yeah, I had to saw them. Like they're they're an inch too long. So oh, I really? I had to saw the top. Oh. And I had to get a small hacksaw okay. and measure and saw and I, and it oh. and it took longer than it should have. You're a real handyman. Uh, yeah. Um. So I was sawing and I cut them, and it must have taken. An hour longer than it should have. It should have been like a minute. It can be quick, but it depends. So I, saws can be hard to use. And then I, as I was doing it, I was like, how the fuck did they make the pyramids? Uh, those people are, right. are unarguably dumber than, way dumber than me now. Yeah. But they, they, like, no, what, but what kind of power tools did they use? What did that, what if they didn't use anything? Right. They use like chisels. Right. Then you, here's the thing when you get into these, uh, Pyramid of conspiracy theory, kind of like you know, uh, sort of analysis slash uh, predictions or whatever that you call it. I do find the pyramids fascinating in terms of like how they got built. Yeah, the, there's the, some major mysteries there that are just mind blowing. Mind blowing on how the how they're they're perfectly placed uh, where it's like you know, yeah, uh, where it's like how, was it specifically like north and south is all meets. I know. Also, when when they actually talk about how do they get those those things up there, I mean, even when you start to go, okay, well, maybe there's some ramps. Okay, but if you calculate what the slope of the ramp was there's no easy way that you can actually get it up even if it was rolling and people were pushing it's like doesn't calculate right so it, it's it's just very strange what? Uh, and yeah i don't know you know i'm afraid and if you're listening just do a light youtube search on pyramids and how they're made and you got people who have dedicated their whole lives to trying to figure it out and they'll they all come to the same conclusion i don't we don't know how this was done well, today, when an amazing building gets built, there's a record. There's, um, well, you can always look up the biography of the architect and the plans and all those things. But what's amazing is the pyramids must have had one or several master builders who knew all of those tricks, and their secrets died with them, and that's fascinating. Also, slave labor, a lot of slave labor, yep. people dying, even just for, so many people died, yeah. just like getting a boulder, getting a rock up. But enough about the good parts. How about the bad parts? The bad parts. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's also the other side. It's like aliens, man. Aliens. That seems no, like the default. Stupid. You don't think aliens have Everyone any Everyone says that about everything. It's so stupid. You don't think aliens had any part in it? I don't think aliens have any part in anything. I, 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 I actually don't think that human beings will ever make contact with aliens ever. Even though I do think there are some out there, I think they're spread so thin and so far away that the chance that we will actually interact with them, like not only see them up close, but even see a signal from far away is is so close to zero. It's like point zero 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 one. That's the chance. And so I'm I would bet if I was a betting man, I would bet that we'll never meet them. Hmm. Never even see evidence of them. I think that there's probably it, some bacteria somewhere, but it's probably a million light years away so far that there's just no chance that we'd ever see them. Did they find any life on Mars? Anything? Nothing? We found a tiny bit of something, like I think we found evidence of ancient water on Mars. There is now new evidence of water contained in glass-like beads on the moon. Also on Mars, we saw 
I think it was Mars or Venus. No, I think it was Mars. We saw this one chemical that's usually a biomarker, but in this case, there's a good explanation without life of why that chemical would be there. So no, I mean, we've never really discovered life anywhere else. You know, let's, let's just break it down. If anything could possibly get to this planet, it'd be so beyond our comprehension of their technology <laughs> that why would they let us live? Mm -hmm. They would just flick us like a like an ant. Like the, it, to have that kind of power to get here, uh, there's a piece of love that would love to believe. That, like, hey, they're up there. That what I really think. Every time someone's like, "But the aliens, they might be really advanced." I'm like, "Yeah, but they also might be really, really not advanced." <laughs> it's yeah. much more likely that they're really stupid. That they're just some bacteria somewhere. Yeah, that's it. Or maybe a a creature is a rodent a, somewhere. A, yeah, a rodent somewhere. That's it. Yeah. Well, you that's know, the most likely scenario. And maybe that rodent could teach some turtles how to do some karate. <laughs> you don't know that. You know, there's a new um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles um, animated movie coming out. Um, really? I don't know if you're into these things, but do you remember? You probably don't see this. Uh, the, let this... me guess. The turtles are all actually other amphibians, and they're all their other genders. <laughs> like the Ghostbuster one. Yes. <laughs> no, That's a good on. guess. <laughs> well, do you, okay, do you remember there was an animated Spider-Man movie about three, four years ago, in, Into the Spider-Verse? I, I, I saw it because it appealed to both adults and kids, and it was actually an amazing little movie. So they're making, I think, a spiritual uh, tie to that. Um, the, the Seth Rogen's company, Point Grey Pictures, um, just put out the trailer. It looks totally fun. They got back in touch finally with the teenage aspect of it, which really was not... You remember when Michael Bay did the terrible ones? Mm -hmm. Like, they weren't even anything like teenagers then. They were just these hulking, weird adult turtle monsters, mm -hmm. you know? And then the cartoons we watched when we were kids, those were kind of fun, but they're dated. Favorite two cartoons. Yeah. Growing up, me and you're the same age. Uh... Two favorite cartoons that I loved that if they were on, I would love to watch all over again. Were they on Nickelodeon? The Batman cartoon. Oh, yeah. That was really good. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It was dark. Yeah. It was kind of tailored after the Tim Burton movies. Yes, it was. And X-Men. So good. Very, very good. Yes. So good. And whenever I, I, I never watched them in succession. I was always sporadic. Yeah. I was like, all. How come there's never been a Thundercats movie? There was. Oh, oh. no, the, there was a, a the, the show. Sorry. The thun, 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 Thundercats. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Are they gay? They were very <laughs> muscular and scantily clad, and they were cat men. Yes. Yeah, I think they were gay. Also, oh. Captain Planet. I would watch that sometime. Captain Planet was cool, but he had a mullet. Rugrats, Doug, I like those. I, I didn't get to Rugrats. I like the, I like, the, I like the the heroes that are like the, the muscles and they're half naked and they're like fighting and they're just sweating. And you ever watch He Man, Master of the Universe? Oh, I loved He Man. Just you're just muscular and and big and oh, brutish and like almost naked. And you know what's funny with He Man? They actually invented the toy first. They made they made the very first toy, and I said, should we? Ninja tie this to a show. Let's invent a show for this. I think. Toy. The, I think that. I think Ghostbusters same thing. That I don't think is true because uh, no, the, the Ghostbusters was a script by Harold Ramis, uh, Dan Aykroyd. Oh, maybe I think right. Them, maybe right. And, I think of Ninja then, Turtles first was a toy, then it became a. No, show. Ninja Turtles was first a comic, and oh. it was a sort of weird little dark comic, and then eventually they decided to make it a little more kid friendly. And that's why, yeah. like the turtles, did they were muscular and naked. Right. As long as they're, they're, uh, when I was a kid, they had to be muscular and naked. Right. I don't know why I liked them so much. And then when I had the toys, I would make them fight, and they'd make up, and then they'd do things with each other. <laughs> uh, you, you know what? Actually, I read, uh, this is true, but I don't remember the reference, that Ninja Turtles was a satire or, or a spoof off of some other about, some other animal ninjas. Was there something else beforehand that they were spoofing? I think it's actually a uh, an allegory for the unhoused in New York City, how they live beneath us. <laughs> and how a reporter is their best friend, and actually uh, a reporter would be a good person for them to be friends with. Well, that's they, funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that they need to be reported on. And I might, in the next second, be able to find out what the Ninja Turtles were based on uh, mm -hmm. or, or reaction to, but uh, it might take me The back. movies were good. Yeah. The movies are good. I, I actually really love the movies, yeah. You know why I like the movies? Because there weren't CGI. There was all, there were like costumes. They looked real. The thing about CGI, I'd never... I don't know. It's just too much. Right. The X-Men movies are great, too. Yeah? Yeah. 
especially the early ones with some early like saber tooth and wolverine stuff. some of them were really bad yeah yeah well you know but any hold uh what, what time are we at what time are we at all right so we're at 25 minutes oh my god we're rambling on and on and on let's uh mm. let's get into some new stories we do here on the executive Mundo podcast we have stories to the front page and the back page my good friend jeff uh, jeffrey blit has them listed right for you here so give it to me jeff all right, well, um, the first story we're going to kick off is a banger, literally, because it's a quick update from OnlyFans. Mm. It's tax season, and many webcam models are now claiming their boob jobs as write-offs. Ooh. So I think Makes this sense. has happened in the past Makes by like, professional porn stars. But this is the first year that we're seeing, apparently, the tax preparer community seeing an explosion of this from OnlyFans. Because OnlyFans is like the, the, demo, the it's like democracy for, for porn, you know? Right, right. Anybody can do it. So... Usually, only surgeries for health reasons are tax deductible, but on OnlyFans, you can make a case that the boob size is a business benefit. So one creator, OnlyFans uh, person, Rebecca Goodwin, said her accountant instantly recognized that her breast enlargement surgery could be classified as an expense. Mm. And she added that it's important people don't see this as an incentive to enter the industry just for cosmetic surgery. Mm. Yeah. How do you feel about this? Well, I don't know, if you're already got to get them and you can make a clear claim that this is part of your business and your income uh, your income scales with the size of your boobs then yes but if you're just a normal girl who wanted to change her her torso appearance who got on on only fans once or twice then you get audited and they can say you didn't really turn this into a business i see you know what i'm saying you think uh, an, an insurance adjuster will look let's just say you're some woman or man and you want to get a cosmetic surgery for your OnlyFans page, right? Yeah. But you make an OnlyFans page just to write off the surgery. <laughs> so you put up four or five videos. Yeah. At what point does an insurance adjuster say, that's enough for me to think that this is your business? I don't know, but I feel like you you have to show, especially here's, here's the thing, is over the years, if they don't see... The right. Let, let, let me put it this way: If they see you constantly claiming losses and yet you're not trying to get like the business to be profitable, after a while they go, "Okay, we see what this is. This is a money hole for your hobby, and this has never been and never will be a career." However, if they say, "Okay, well, this year she got the boom job and she made a few hundred bucks, and the next year she made a few thousand, and the next year another, you know, went down, but then the next year went up and made more with thousand. This is a business slowly growing. Right, right, right. Interesting. What yeah. I'm trying to say is, should I get a surgery? No, you definitely should. Thank you. <laughs> Well, I answered that pretty quick. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Could I write that off? Let's just say I was balding. Eh. Sorry. Man, just saying that just doesn't seem right. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Wow. I really gagged there. You, you, you'll never be bald. Uh, God. God made sure of that. Uh-huh, he uh-huh. gave me a decent sized penis, good hair, legs of a toddler. But <laughs> <laughs> um, could I write off? A hair transplant. Could you write out? You could write that off. <laughs> think about that. I'm in front of the camera a lot. Yeah, I think the other question is, what percentage of it could you say is business versus personal? I think in an audit they would say, well, look, you said this is ninety percent business, but come on, it's it's probably more like 10, 20 percent business. But it directly affects my bottom line. Well, what if I become less attracted the, to the uh, opposite sex the, or same sex? The difference is when someone gets basketball sized boobs, they can say. Why would I ever get these for me? These are clearly for the business. Oh, I see. So it needs to be comically big. <laughs> so I need like a hairline like just above my eyebrows. Yes. Like clearly I got this for comedic purposes. Yes, especially if you can say, look, I'm they, they bill me as the carefully coiffed comedian. There you go. Well, think about that. I mean... Well, let me say this. Your clothing and everything, I think you could easily claim a third or maybe if you're ballsy, 50% of all your clothing costs as... Because you need different outfits for your, both your videos and your on stage. Like, for instance, this whole outfit. So yeah. what percent of your clothes do you claim claim as business? About 50%. Okay. Yeah. And see, this is like, you know, I wear this on, I've worn this on Re- Reels videos. I've worn this on this podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it's hard because what am I supposed to do? Have a, an outfit that I only wear for on stage and podcast, like a suit? Right. Like I don't have, See, a, like, I I just, don't have a uniform. I just spent a thousand dollars on a on a digital a high end digital piano, and I, just, I don't have a real business reason for it. But I am going to claim that it's part of some future uh, lounge singer 
uh, 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 angle for my for my stand up or something Could from a tax perspective. Have, I got an idea. Mm-hmm. Not an idea. This is not a scheme. Mm-hmm. Uh, cut this if you have to. Yeah. Sorry. Um, what I need for this podcast, yes, is I need a little like piano jingle kind of you know, music, kind of oh, like really? tra- uh, like uh, elevator music, kind of like background. When I do these clips, I need something underneath, oh. and I don't want to pay royalty free. But mm. if my good friend has a a piano and, and is musically inclined, mm. could you do a little? Well, I'd be happy to. I just don't know if I would be as good as you would want because what I do Jeff, is I always just make it. Yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> but if you could, yes, and that'd be for the podcast. I'd write it off. That's right. I had should. to get my friend a piano so I can write because I will say that you do need original music. It may say royalty free, but you can get flagged. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a comedian out there who just released a special. He had to take it down because he didn't get full rights to the music. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'll tell you who it was off stage, but uh, off camera. But oh. he had to. Does take... his name rhyme with Gilger? No, no, oh. no. But he had to. T- he had to take down the special because he didn't have the full rights to the music at the beginning of the. Yes. It wasn't cleared. Right. So you know, the only way you can really go around that is if it's a completely original music. And when I talked right. to Meta. Meta will flag videos that don't have original music. Right. So I had a couple of videos that got flagged. And I was like, why is that? Why do you get flagged? Because I, I use royalty-free music. You know for how it works? Videos. The music companies, um, and there's really only four or five big ones, um, they take their entire library and they upload the oh. fingerprints to mm. what? I think my dog's barking. He is. Yeah. It's howling. I'll bring him in. I'll bring him in the podcast. Oh, that's uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Hello, everybody. Hey. You're listening to Just Me. It's the Franklin cast. Hi, Franklin. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So what's his name? His name's Franklin. This is the only time we're going to have true content in this podcast. Where licking the, the mic. Licking the mic. Don't lick that. That's what I've said to him before. <laughs> <laughs> and um, how old is he? Nice. Nah, there it is. All right. Let's keep going. What, what do you got next? No stories. Oh, okay. We're not going to interview Franklin? No, nah, we're not. He's just a dog. <laughs> I know. Okay. Well, in my... Um, I'm going to close the door real quick. Yeah, close your... Do it up. Keep the pod rolling. It's one of those podcasts where you just you know it's funny about podcasts. They don't have to, if they look too slick, it doesn't matter. But it's fine. Is even in he's in frame, isn't he? Yeah, he's in frame. Yeah. Okay, so listen up, alcoholics. Because <laughs> my little dog's like, what? yes. <laughs> <laughs> because a Nebraska law enforcement facility is looking for ten volunteers to get drunk this April so they can practice giving field sobriety tests. Oh wow. The volunteers are needed to train new officers at the Nebraska Law Enforcement Training Center. Anyone interested will be asked to drink for five hours, and officials will pay you for your drink of choice. All you need to do is contact, and I'm not making this up, gene.boner at nebraska.gov. It'd be funny if, like, at the precinct, they're like, where are these people? They're late. No one's here. <laughs> well, I told them to drive over as soon as they're drunk. Oh, uh... no. Oh, I said they should drive over after they got drunk. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. It happens every time. I forget. You just know that he's going to get thousands of emails and not be able to, uh, you know, because this went viral. This was like um, posted in one newspaper and then reposted in another and then covered in, in all over social it, media. It kind of reminds me of that. Uh, do you remember that uh, the episode of Seinfeld when they had to pretend they had a certain ailment? For the for the medical school. Oh yeah. Do you remember that? Yes. And I Kramer do. had to pretend he had gonorrhea. Yes. And then our jaundice. I can't remember what it was. Was yeah. it that? Something like that. Syphilis. Gonorrhea. Yeah. <laughs> uh That's what funny. do you make about this story? Do you feel like is it do you feel like it's a it's oh, my dog is like being like a little too playful. Frankie, come over here. Here, buddy. There you go. Do you, well, think, do you think that like I think it's really funny that they need training for this. Like, do you really need training for this? Like, what do you do when they're drunk? Like, okay, uh, this week we're going to learn how to fight a drunk man to the floor. <laughs> yeah, really. 
Uh, you know, it's a lot of uh, touch your nose with both your hands, stick your hands out. Have you ever, have you ever seen somebody like being like kind of like had my own sobriety test? I mean, not up close. I think I've driven by one or two. Yeah. My dad, one time we went to we went to go see his brother. We we all went for a family trip, which you never do. And my 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 dad had some drinks and drove home, mm. and he got pulled over and had to do a mm. breathalyzer test Ooh. in front of his kids. And my pass? mom was like losing it, dude, losing well, it. Well, if he's only had one or two drinks, he'll be okay. But if it was more than that, he's in the 60s. Yeah. So, and then my mom made me drive home, and then it was just uh, my dad was just being chewed out. And, well, know. wait a second. He took the test. Did he pass the test or not? No. He said, You better not drive, sir. Oh, I see. That's not good. But he wasn't a uh, site. Uh, he didn't have to pay a fee or. No, no. He was fine. Well, I see. Mm. Yeah. episode number two um <laughs> but yeah we had to uh i know come here buddy he's gonna go that's nah, fine he's fine any hole i uh what, what 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 city was this in nebraska as the state i don't know the exact um uh, I mean, let's say Omaha. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's the only I, uh, city I know. It'd be kind of funny if they did that for like drugs too. Like, okay, we got to do this one for crack. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that is the one. Uh, Looking for 12 crackheads to show up. We got we to know, know what it's like to deal with a heroin addict, guys. So uh, does anyone want to volunteer? You take heroin for five hours. You come on over and we, you, you, we, uh, you know, we do training on you. It makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, it makes sense. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny, like, this seems like such, like, a fratty, it almost sounds like a, like, a beginning of, a, like, a movie. Yeah. Where, like. Oh, know, yeah. It sounds like half like of, a the, of a Kumar movie premise. Like a kind of vibe movie yes. where it's, like. Okay, so, so, so they would, they would show up drunk, and then there'd probably be some twist. What would the, what would the twist be? Uh, they end up killing a cop, and they're on the run. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, <laughs> That'd right. That'd be kind right. of fun. Right. Or maybe they witness cops doing something that's like, wait, so they take it from the evidence room and the cop season that they saw and they go like, I don't know, on the run again. They're always yeah. on the run. Yes, always. Have you ever been part of a focus group in any sort? I actually have. I've done one or two. It was a very long time ago. But yeah, I think my mom saw one and it was for kids my age. She said, this is, this is fun. You want to earn 400 bucks and go and talk to these. I think it was for a toy. It was, it was, I was probably 13, 14 and it was for some sort of teenage toy thing, mm -hmm. and I went in. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we joined Scientology that day. Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know me. Um, but yeah, they they for about an hour they just ask you a twenty billion questions about something. Like, wh when would you use it? Would you use this? Thing? Would, would you like this? Would you like a different color? It's just so many billions of questions. Well, uh, this is it's actually. And I don't think I've ever told you this. Me and my good friend Kirk Smith, his words not mine. Uh, <laughs> we did a focus group. Or Patreon. Oh. As creators. That's kind of cool, actually. And what happened was, he's my dog, so I can't, wants to play on a toy. So Patreon brought us in and had a different barrage of different types of creators. They had us, comedians, podcasters. They had a woman that does arts and crafts. Right. They had the free speech guy oh, okay. the free speech white guy yeah 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 and i quote he said why can't i say the n-word on patreon oh my god he said that right which was so crazy that he said that. he's like why can't i say the n-word on patreon they'll def they'll deplatform you if you have certain language like if i were to say the n-word on patreon on my on my patreon i'll get deplatformed and we're just like uh-huh oh my god why are you saying the You know what's really funny is these free speech guys, there's really, they don't really like free speech in general. It's just one word they want to say. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there was the woman that does arts and crafts. She makes like, you know, little trinkets and she like, she, uh, she, you know, she's supported by Patreon. Uh, yeah. There was the, a, a musician. There was like all these kind of like, it was just a real who's fun, who though, of why. You get in on the ground floor and you sort of see what something is before it's going to be huge. Yeah, and they had uh, my dog. And this is a mistake to bring the dog in. <laughs> Don't no, do hey. No, no. Frankie. They, uh, the free speech guy was really weird. Yeah. These guys, 
And he didn't blink. He was like he was. He looked. He looked like a proud boy. He was a proud boy. Actually, this this is uh, tangential to something that I that I I've God, read he, about a, bu- a bunch recently. Which is that word twice to me, and I'm always fascinated when you use it. Mm, tangent- going off on a tangent. Tangent- tangential. Man, yeah. So much fun to hear. <laughs> so, w- people say that Elon Musk is in slow motion learning the same lessons that every social media app has found. For example, you know he came in with all these claims of free speech and all this stuff. Well. The first thing he learned was when he threw the doors wide open is that all of the um, neo-Nazis and Klansmen thought, oh, great, I get to say the N-word all day. And so he had to clamp that down because all of... Do you remember there was, like, right when he took over, there was a huge exodus of advertisers. Right, right. And he needs money bad. So first he had to fix that up. Is it going to fall? Uh, I don't think Twitter's going to fall. I blame him why Meta has to pay for, for verification. That is true. You know, he now values the company at $20 million. He paid $40 million for it. So... I look at this with, I laugh so hard at this. Elon paid, I'm quoting someone on the internet, I forget who it is, but basically Elon paid an extra $20 billion to get kicked in the nuts every day on a big, th- on a big, uh, you know, uh, He's chat. still the richest African American in, in America. <laughs> Just so crazy. White African American. Um, it's funny because Elon is slowly learning all of the lessons that any Buddy in the tech world could have just taught him, but he doesn't like listening to experts. He thought he was going to come in and like, you know, he didn't think they knew anything, so right. he just wanted to learn. But he's le- learning everything the hard way. Right. He had a hair transplant too. <laughs> when have you wrote it off? Good uh, question. <laughs> good question. I. Uh, yeah. He could say it's part of his neural link. You know, he's doing experiments on himself, and he needed to he understand the scalp for the. You know, so he needed the hair. I don't know why. He's a maniac. Yeah. Do you, do you own any Tesla stock? I don't uh, own any stock at the moment. Yeah? Check it out. Hmm. I mean, Tesla could be interesting. If I were you, I would buy AI stock. Of course, you got to predict which one's the right one. But Maybe AI will tell me what to get. Mm-hmm. AI? Yeah, Wait. you should ask AI which AI stock to buy. Let me ask you a question. Yes. Wedding vows. Uh-huh. AI. Oh, oh, you're saying is it uh, no. ethical to have the AI write your wedding vows? I only can ask this because the girlfriend's not here today. I see, and she doesn't listen to podcasts. Listen, I have what? We- eventually, I have wedding vows. Uh-huh. Well, what if I don't know where to start? Why don't you make them uh, funny? AI. Oh well, yeah, that's true. It's so daunting. Yes, so AI tempting. I will get the best vows from movies and history that's true and it'll sound poet how do you know yeah that how is does true. She know? i'll add my little like oh you know little things little touches know. yes that is true would i it, mean it's not a bad idea would it be you just can't ever admit it every valentine's day card ai yeah every birthday card <laughs> ai <laughs> christmas card ai yeah grievances i mean condolences uh, you don't even need to like let's say that it you know for me there, there are days where i am not seeing my girlfriend in person um you know you could have the ai running the text messages here listen <laughs> i'm gonna say this right now you get a credit you, if you get a valentine's day card for me a birthday card for me chat gbt <laughs> sorry it's happening <laughs> a thank you card chat gbt my future wedding vows chat gbt that's funny i'm gonna go all in well, I'm not gonna write anything. I'm nothing. Nothing I'll ever. Nothing that I'll ever write will be sent from me. It'll be from an AI yeah. bot that will know exactly what to say. See, the problem is what you should have done is done it and not told anyone. Ah, about it. But what, you, what you you're did right. is what I do is you told everyone about it, and now you're probably <sighs> not gonna do it. The good thing about this podcast, no one's listening. Yeah. <laughs> it's like my dog here, right? Oh, so he knows which end is the right end of the microphone. To uh, mm. what's he doing? Should I, Franklin? Should I use ChatGPT for my? Birthday cards from now on. Franklin loves ChatGPT. There he is. He's always looking at the camera. It's a, it's a cute dog, isn't he? He's very cute. Yeah. Um, we got next. What okay, time? What time so are we at? We're at forty-three minutes. Ooh, one more story, and then we'll wrap it up like a condom on a kid. Ew. All right. Do you <laughs> want to do deadly spiders in pools, mm. or do you want to do um, Trump uh, attacking Mexico, or do you want to do a toilet that turns your poop into ashes? No, oh, you know where I'm going on this. Mm-hmm. Ashes. Yes. Yeah. Ashes. All right. Yes. Because I'm really hungry. I want to go to Shake Shack after this. All right. So, <laughs> in defecation news, ah, yes. A video has gone viral on Instagram that shows a toilet which turns your poop into ashes. Ah. So, this Cinderella incinerating toilet, I don't know why it's called Cinderella, but it is, 
It uses radiant heat and fresh air to incinerate we waste with gases filtered out before being released. The product can be powered by either gas or electricity and is promoted as an eco-friendly solution to waste disposal. However, some commenters have raised concerns about the energy required to incinerate waste and what happens to the gases produced. Others have queried how the toilet would work if someone needs to urinate. Mm. It all sounds like a very efficient idea, but no one has taken into consideration the smell. Right. When poop becomes ash, it doesn't just become senseless ash. It becomes, what's that? Yes. Dried poop first. Shitty ash. <laughs> Shitty ash. And imagine we could turn your poop into ash. Wouldn't that, that would be, be great? Good. Yeah. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> One time I caught him eating his own poop. Oh, God. Did I ever tell you that? No. And I was like, I remember I caught this little guy eating his own poop. This is like the first week I got him. He was eating his own poop. And I, I kind of snapped. I yelled. I go, we do not eat our own poop in this damn house. <laughs> and then I thought to myself, I hope my neighbors know I own a dog. Uh... <laughs> Because well, that, or they think this guy's girlfriend is into, into some funky stuff. Yeah, really. Yeah, girlfriend's like, why do the neighbors look at me so sideways like that? I'm like, well, that's oh, funny. Probably got a crush on you. You know, he he's been looking at the softbox. He loves professional lighting products. He does. Maybe in a past life, you were a gaffer, a gaffer, or maybe a cam girl. Yeah, cam girl. <laughs> you like yeah. the light? Yeah. Mm. Frank. Um, you know what's funny? Like, although it is like a viral video, and it's kind of funny, like. One day in the future, we're going to like, we're going to think about times when, can you believe we actually, actually used to poop in a bowl and flush it? Right. It's going to be complete nonsense to like whatever generation of kids are going to be at that time. Yeah. I wonder what it'll be. But yeah, it'll I be like, I so picture like, easy. I picture like a back to the future situation where like you just shit in your car and it runs on your shit. There you go. That's good. That is <laughs> Have really you good. ever, speaking of poop and animals and you know, whatever, have you ever driven to San Francisco on the five? I don't you, think pass, so. you know what I'm talking about when you pass by. So there's a section in Los Angeles. Uh, sorry, there's a highway in California where you go through. Uh, you, you get to San Francisco two ways. You can take the five or you can go with the PCH and up and scale up. The PCH one's very scenic. You can see the uh, cliff side of the Pacific Ocean. And it's beautiful. And there's like, there's like wine countries and there's like these cool surf communities. And it's really, really cool. Or you can go with the five, which is inland. It gets sad. But there's also these cattle farms and have the hard poop emissions coming out of this. Uh, what is it called? When methane. Methane. It's so thick. That Can you, you smell it? Dude. Like really? you drive. It, 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 it's, honestly, it's like four exits. It's like four miles of just methane. And all you smell is farts the whole All time. you smell is farts. Oh, cow farts. Oh. All the way there. By the way, did you know you can feed, you can add a special algae to their food and you don't smell their farts at all, and there's much less methane. Hey, he doesn't believe that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Imagine we fell it fed juice and algae, and your poop doesn't mm -hmm. stink. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, there's a way to reduce the uh, the methane and the farts through uh, through algae. Oh, mm -hmm. man, you really know your shit stuff. I know my shit. <laughs> you know I your really shit, do. literally, figuratively. Um, but yeah, if you ever go to San Francisco and you drive down the five, up the five, you pass by that farm, that cattle farm. The methane is so strong it's crazy mm. and you the thing is wow. the car the the air comes through the vents of the car right. so you're hot boxing yourself no way to prevent it and you know how does it get roadhead while that's happening <laughs> i know that because i've given it uh <laughs> <laughs> uh i had a good time Did you have a good time yeah yeah what time are we at we are at 48 minutes ah we can solve for two more minutes it'd be a sweet 50 okay uh jeffrey where can they find you okay find me on tiktok at what you need to know and instagram at jeff underscore plit and twitter at jeffrey plit and i spell it with a g you can find me at adel sebi across all platforms do me a favor you know if you the, the bigger this podcast gets the more likely we can afford toys for this little guy over here instead of having have this very large cock ring. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is a cock ring. Um, you can uh, follow me at Adel Sepi across all platforms. Uh, you can watch us live at Bar Lubitsch at Totally Comedy Show every single Wednesday. Me and Jeff have a show where we showcase some of the best comedians in the country. Uh, also, you can uh, subscribe, <laughs> get the notification bell on, on when this show is being notified uh, when new episodes come out on YouTube. And uh, have a good week. We'll talk to you soon. All right, well, see you later. Bye. Bye.